Hi, fifth graders. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. It's Monday. We're getting down to um, the nitty gritty. We only have a few weeks left and we're going to do some poetry. And I'm super excited because poetry is one of my favorite things. I know some of you don't like it and this might be kind of hard for some of you, but that's okay. I just want you to try your best. This is a fun way for us to end this year. This is the last grammar chapter we're going to do. Um, after we're done with this chapter, there'll be no more. Um, no more grammar. No, so let's just enjoy this and do some poetry and have some fun with it. Okay. So I want to go over the worksheets that you were supposed to do. And then we're going to talk about writing a type of poem, which actually is probably a sort of an easier because it follows a certain format and you don't have to come up with anything, everything just off the top of your head. So I want you to turn with me first to pages 103 and 104, which you were supposed to do using the, the, the thesaurus. So on page 103, we read the two different, the two different poems. I read them to you and I hope that you chose, and I have yet to look at some of the emails that you guys sent me because today is the day that you were supposed to be doing it, but I'm recording this for Monday. So, you know, it's kind of weird, but I hope you chose the first one. It had much more descriptive words. Um, even when I read it, I felt that the flow was better. Um, so some of the words that you may have underlined was shattered, fragments, palaces, polished, pearl, um, duke and earl, delicate, speckled, smashed, scattered, miles. All of those were some of the wonderful, wonderful um, words that were... Um, that, that word in that poem. So on page 104, you were going to look up words and suggest alternatives. So you should have used your home thesaurus if you have one or looking things up or using in your book, but I don't think all these words were in the back of your book. I think you probably had to get online. It's very easy to get online and use this the thesaurus. You just Google thesaurus and then click on a link and go to thesaurus.com. That's the one I usually go to, or is it .org? I'm not sure which it is. But anyways, when you type in the word, boom, it gives you all the stuff. It's really quick and short and easy. So I'm just going to give you some examples of some words that are in my book for these. But what I'm looking for is just for you to have, you know, two or three different kinds of words. So, for example, excuse me, for number one, change. And the synonyms would be alter, adjust, modify. Um, for number two, famous. Synonyms could be distinguished, notable. Um, you might even put celebrity there. Um, number three, important, um, momentous, significant. Um, number four, nice. You and Nice is one of the ones that I oftentimes ask people to change because it's not specific enough. Delightful, pleasant. You said good, that's okay, but good is still kind of like meh, but I want like wonderful, awesome, delightful, words like that, okay? Um, number five, wet, you could go with drenched, soggy, soaked, um, waterlogged. Number six now for cold, you might have you might have um chosen chilly, frigid, frosty. Um, for number seven, for big, maybe enormous, gigantic, hugeungus, that's one of my favorites, huge, um, giant. Number eight, for shouting, you could have gone with hollering, roaring, yelling, screaming, any of those. So then I'm looking for your little two sentences about your friends. So now we're going to go to page 105. We're going to introduce a type of poem that you may or may not have written before. And I'm going to read over this with you. It gives you an example of two. It's called a di di uh, di 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 diamanta. It's called a diamanta. Okay. And it's named diamanta because it's a diamond shape. And it is a form poem, which means that you have a specific format that you are supposed to follow. And you may have done haikus in the past. Haikus are like this. You may have done acrostics in the past. A hycrostic is a form poem where you follow a specific form. So they give us some examples and you can see very clearly, it looks like a diamond. You have spring, misty pink, thawing, warming, budding, flowers, rainbows, crickets, bonfires, changing, cooling, falling, colorful, hazy fall. And then the next one we have is ant, busy, tiny, crawling, working, carrying, crumbs, dirt, mountaintops, talons, 
rising, soaring, crying, immense, watchful eagle. So you can see how it starts with one thing and it goes through and eventually transitions into something different, which is what the word ends with. So it talks about, you describe them as a diamond. These poems are examples of diamanta poetry, which is French and means covered with diamonds. A diamantic usually it contrasts two nouns that are opposites. So you're contrasting summer, winter, heat and cold. Here they have spring, fall, and ant and eagle. The one on the right contrasts the insect and the birds that are opposite in many ways, but a diamanta no, does not always contrast objects in nature. It could be other things like ideas like joy and sorrow, love and hate. Um, notice that each line contains a certain type of word. Each line also contains a certain number of words. That what's, that's what makes it what we call a form poem. Halfway through the poem, the description changes to the second line. So nines, lines two and three describe spring, and the first line in line one describes spring, but then it starts to sort of segue into fall in that noun line that's in the middle. So flowers and rainbows are things we associate with spring, but then crickets and bonfires remind us of fall. Actually, bonfires to me remind me of spring, summer, and fall, but that's, they think it's fall. Um, lines five and six then go on to describe fall, and then the last word is fall in line seven. So most diamantas do not have titles. The nines, the lines, the nouns of the first and last noun. Uh, I can't talk. I'm getting ahead of myself. The nouns in the first and last lines function as the title. Is, is there a cat? Oh, there is a cat in the background. I saw some movement. That's that's my moonchild cat. Okay, can you see her? Everybody see moonchild? Say hi, moonchild. Okay, she distracted me, so I was willing to bet that she was distracting you too. All right, so mo so anyway, so here's the form in, in pink. They're giving us the spring one. So line one has one noun, spring is this, the example. Line two has two adjectives. They used misty and pink. Then line three has three action words that end in ing, and they used thawing, warming, budding. Line four uses four nouns, flowers, rainbows, crickets, bonfires. Line five uses more action words that end in ing, changing, cooling, falling. Line six, two adjectives, colorful, hazy, and then we have one noun again. So now, I don't know, I have a blank page. Is yours blank? I have a blank page. So we are going to write a diamanta together. So you have to kind of bear with me because I don't have like a screen capture shot. But what we're gonna use is night and day. So the first thing you do when you're writing a diamanta is that you list words, okay? So I already have a list. I did the list already just to kind of save time. So for day, I made a list of nouns. So for nouns, I have flowers, activities, jobs, sun, clouds, roosters, robins, birds, not birds, okay? For adjectives, we have sunny, busy, light, bright, lively, and noisy. For the IN words, I have hiking, eating, swimming, bird watching, playing. And I was going to put reading, but I read at night too. So I kind of took that one out because that, that doesn't work. Um, then for night, I have campfires, lightning bugs, moon stars, crickets, and they, and, um, for adjectives, then I have peaceful, dark, dim, droopy, quiet, sleepy. Um, and then for the ing words, for night, I have stargazing, resting, sleeping, relaxing, dreaming. So maybe I should put tired instead of sleepy because I don't want to say the same thing twice. Okay. So now I'm going to write the diamanta using this list of words that I already came up with. So the first word is going to be day then I need to pick two adjectives. So I'm looking at my adjective list. I've got sunny, busy, light, bright, lively, noisy. Which ones should I use? The hard part is that I only get to pick two. So my favorite ones, um, I'm probably going to go with bright, lively.
Okay. Now I need to pick my three ing words, day ing words. So my ing words are swimming, bird watching, playing, eating, hiking. Um, so I'm definitely going to put, put playing and eating because I love food. I don't know. We eat at night too, but eating is more of a day thing, isn't it? Cooking. What are some other things? I'm not sure I actually like these. Hiking. Let's go with, um, hmm, playing, eating, but I don't know what I want. Hiking, none of these seem right. So I'm going to put the, I'm going to put a pin in that. I'm kind of waiting. I'm going to come back to that. What is it that we do during the day that I could put here? Fits. I don't know. All right. So I'm going to skip that. I'm putting a pin in it because I can't decide. Um, so number four now, I'm going to put my nouns. So I'm going to put two day nouns and then two night nouns. So I'm going to put sun and then my last one is going to be moon. So it's going to be a really clear segue. So I'm going to go sun. And then my last one is going to be moon. So now I need to decide which ones I want to put between. And it should be ones that I think sort of relate to each other. Um, so maybe clouds and stars. So sun, clouds, stars, moon. I like that. I like how that flows. It goes right in from from. From, now you can have clouds at night, but you really can't see them. So it kind of segues, right? Sun, clouds, stars, moon, okay? So now I need my, um, my ing words for night. So I'm going to go with um, stargazing, resting. Should I do sleeping? Should I do resting and dreaming? Um Maybe not stargazing, maybe just resting, sleeping, dreaming. I like that. I'm going to do that. Resting, sleeping, dreaming. I know what I want for the day. Playing, eating, laughing. I want laughing. That's what I'm going to put there. Not that we don't laugh at night, but people are more lively during the day. Okay, so playing, eating, laughing. That's what I'm putting up, up here. Ah, ha, ha, ha. All right. Now I need two adjectives for night. So I've got peaceful, tired, sleepy, dim, dreamy, quiet. I think that since I did resting, sleeping, dreaming, that peaceful, quiet would work or quiet, peaceful. Since at the top I have bright, lively, I have a, I have a one syllable and a two syllable. I'm going to do that down below. So I'm going to go quiet, peaceful, and then night. Okay, so I sort of worked it out for you guys. This is how we write a diamanta. And let me read the whole thing for you. Um, and I'll probably um, type it actually in the lesson plan so you can see the one that I composed and how it looks like a little diamond. So it'll be there. You probably already saw it when you when you went to your lesson plans and clicked on this link. So we have day. Bright, lively, playing, eating, laughing, sun, clouds, star, moon, stars, uh, resting, sleeping, dreaming, quiet, peaceful night. I like it. It's actually pretty good. All right. So now your assignments is going to be on pages 106 and 107. Now, don't stress out. You're not writing the whole diamante yet, but you're planning it. So what you're going to do is you're going to choose some nouns that you would contrast, or you can do ideas. It gives you some examples. Grandfather, grandmother, grandfather. You could do mom, dad, parent, child, teacher, student. Places like ocean, desert, earth, space, North Pole, equator. You could even do like jungle, desert. Um, things like roof, basement, hat, shoe, mouse, elephant, um, 
things, things, you know, different, different animals or things that are opposites. Um, or you could do ideas like fear, courage, sadness, happiness, rebellion, obedience, love, hate. Um, so you're going to pick, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of draw a picture that goes with each noun just to, and you can draw an actual physical picture or you can draw a word picture where you describe it as much as you can just to get yourself familiar and thinking about those nouns. So then, oh wait, on page 107 it has hate and love, so you have to take that out of your categories, you can't use it. They already gave an example. So on page 107 they give you the format, this is what you need to do, and they, they give you love, hate and love as an example, so I'm sorry, you can't use that. But you can use sadness and happiness, fear and courage, rebellion, obedience, you can even use serious, funny, um, loud, quiet, okay? Um, but you want to pick something that you feel like you can adequately describe. So don't pick anything super obscure. Like, don't pick any animals that you don't know anything about, you know? Um, so, or you could pick, like, ocean desert. Um, you could even do um, different places that you've been. You could do, like, mountains versus beach, uh, but don't don't pick anything you don't know anything about. You need to pick things that you are familiar with. You can do mom, dad. You can do brother, sister. Um, try to stay away from boy, girl, because we don't want to get into any like gender issues. Um, but you could do grandma, grandpa. You could do teacher, student. Um, what are some other examples? I guess there's there, that's a lot. That's a lot. Roof, basement, um, the attic, the basement. Um, you could maybe even do um, different towns that you've lived in, if you have lived in different places, if they are very different. You could do city, country. Um, those, those would be two things that would be opposites. Um, um, you could even do like grocery store farm, which are similar, but opposite. Now, nah, maybe they're too similar. I don't know. Um, anyways, those are some sort of ideas. A bird and a fish might be an interesting way to contrast too. So those are some ideas. So what you're going to do is on page 107, you're going to plan your diamanta by listing adjectives, the ing action words, and nouns. So first word, you're going to put your first word you're exploring. The second word, you're going to put your second word that you're exploring. Okay. And then it does have you actually writing it. Then it has you listing your adjectives for each ones in the boxes and your ing words and your nouns. And then you're going to try going to draft yours following that pattern. You can do that on a separate sheet of paper or you can write it on page 109, which is also blank. But just use the top half of the page if you write it on 109, because then on the bottom half of the page is when you're going to write your edited version. Um, Oh, wait. Yeah, you're going to write your edited version if you decide to make any changes, okay? So you can put that on page 109, and if you have to do any proofreading or anything of that sort, okay? So good luck. I'm looking forward to reading your poems, and have a wonderful day. Bye.